Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, this is a pilot run of doing, uh, having somebody join us via Skype. We've done it before, but I don't think we've done it in these premises, so uh, bear with us. Uh, my name is Nadia McConnell, uh, head of the U.S. Ukraine Foundation. I want to welcome everybody here joining us for, I think, what will be a very most timely discussion, uh, given the uh, elections coming up on Sunday. Uh, but I also want to acknowledge that we're uh, marking several important anniversaries, one uh, tragic and one uh, celebration. Uh, today is the fifth anniversary of the downing of MH17 uh, in Ukraine. Yesterday, there was a very excellent discussion at the American Foreign Policy Council about this, and there's been a lot written. And it's important that we continue to mark this anniversary um, so that the world doesn't forget the victims. And really, the very important story, uh, facts that uh, occurred before the downing and, and after. So perhaps we should have a moment of silence for the victims. And also marking an anniversary of celebration, because in 1990, the Parliament of Ukraine and uh, the Declaration of Sovereignty. That's the Declaration of Sovereignty, which really was the first step that led to the independence of Ukraine. Uh, so much has happened in all these years. Um, so uh, a lot of times we focus on the negative, but it, we should not forget the enormous progress that has been made in Ukraine, particularly by the people of Ukraine and Ukraine civil society. So today, as we look to, we just had a very fascinating, interesting uh, presidential election in Ukraine. There's been a lot of discussion about what it all meant. Uh, the fact that uh, President Zelensky got 73% of the vote. Uh, I think most analysts agree that it wasn't so much a, a vote for someone as it was a rejection of the past. And I think so much, so many times in Ukraine's history that's been true. When you think about the vote for independence, which took place in December of 1991, where over 40, 93% of people voted for independence, including in places like Crimea. I don't think anybody had any idea of what the future was going to bring. Uh, so they were not necessarily voting as much for independence as they were a rejection of the center, which at that time was Moscow. And I think a lot of it was driven by many factors, including, of course, the Chernobyl accident in 1986. So perhaps I think this election of the president um, is a reflection of, of that continuation of, of that sentiment where the people of Ukraine continue in very peaceful ways. I think this, is, this needs to be acknowledged to try and change their system of government uh, by uh, you know, the high participation in the elections. So again, we have another uh, important uh, date for the people of Ukraine and that is the uh, upcoming parliamentary election. We are very uh, fortunate to have today, and the first one I was going to say was going to be an insider's view because we have somebody who's been participating in the uh, election process and is currently running uh, for the parliament, and an outsider's view with Katerina uh, Smagli, but actually they're both inside views. One is someone who's participating directly in the political election process and certainly uh, Katerina has, has been active in civil society and, and they are uh, as much uh, an important factor in the Ukraine's political development as any election that we have seen. So we have two inside views, but from 
different perspectives. So without further ado, uh, we, we were sorry that Sidney uh, Mosanko, who had uh, hoped to be here with us, uh, coming from, I guess, KU, uh, let us know yesterday that he was not going to be able to, to join us. Not surprising, he's running for, for the parliament. So, but we are delighted to have him here with us via Skype. So welcome, uh, Sidney. We look forward to your perspectives uh, as, as uh, one who is running for the parliament. You also participated in the presidential uh, election. Of course, the importance of the various elections that have taken place in Ukraine, and certainly the one coming up is important. And so we've said we really have two inside views. Uh, one from yourself, who has uh, been part of the election process, I guess during the presidential campaign as well, and certainly now for the Verkhovnarada, and also from Katerina, we have the inside view in terms of from uh, Ukraine civil society, which uh, plays a very important key role in all of these electoral processes as well. So without any further uh, introduction, we have your, your biography here for everybody. So if you would please uh, give us your perspective. Uh, maybe you want to start a little saying a few words about the presidential election and why you, you uh, decided to participate in that. And then of course, then most importantly now, uh, you're running for the, the parliament and then how you see the future there. Yeah, sure. I'm, I'm, first of all, I'm glad uh, this opportunity, and thank you, Nadia, and thank you, Katerina, for this opportunity. And I, I definitely uh, see the importance of the of the moment in the Ukrainian history, and uh, kind of proud to be part of it. So, uh, coming back to the presidential election, for me, it was a, just uh, just a beginning for me personally because I'm a, I'm a new guy in the, in the political life of Ukraine. Previously, I was, as you have seen, I was running mainly business activities. So, uh, for me, it was just um, an opportunity to start a long, long period of elections. Uh, and the cycle, as you as you probably know, will will be including not only the parliament election but also local uh, municipalities election. So it just uh, it just uh, like a, a long road as as usual in politics. So and the, another reason for me running for president was uh, uh, trying to explain and present to the to the civil society here in Ukraine uh, a liberal liberal uh, platform and telling people something different from uh, from the perspective of uh, uh, a guy being more in favor of market, free market, more than uh, regulated economy. And uh, for me as a person, it was important to see the reaction of people and uh, uh, how they uh, understand the, the difference between the uh, planned the so Soviet-style economy and the, the free market. So, generally, presidential election was uh, uh, was like very clean, I would say. And first, uh, for the first time probably in history, it was not a lot of complaints about uh, bribery, uh, buying votes, or something like that. Of course, there were some circumstances that we can count on the unfair side, but not not many. Uh, it was a kind of a breakthrough for the people, like uh, new air, and uh, as a result, you see a completely uh, a new freshman uh, winning the race, which is absolutely incredible in the sense of uh, renewal of the power and the system of power and political system. Probably, we are going to see it in the future how it will work out. But for the moment, there is a big hope. Uh, uh, in the society, and uh, <clears throat> as I said, it was just the start uh, for the for this whole big uh, long process of renewal. Uh, I suggest so for me, like a uh, like a small independent candidate for president of Ukraine, I was quite satisfied because we were speaking to a lot of people in different parts of the country. Of course, they, they don't know me very well. That's why we probably not, uh, 
not get as many votes as we uh, as we were supposed to, but at least uh, we know the the way and uh, uh, like uh, the way up. I mean, because from very very small amount of voters, there is a there is a road up always. You know, because <laughs> you can go down from the small numbers. <laughs> And uh, so now for me, it's like uh, the next step is a parliament election and uh, the main feature is a small, short campaign, like literally three weeks campaign, because uh, as you know, we were all waiting for the decision of the uh, Supreme Court about uh, these extraordinary elections are, are legal or not. So finally, we got the, the decision quite late. And, uh, uh, after you, you follow, follow all the formalities, after you complete them, you, you literally have three weeks to campaign, and this for everybody is the same. Um, the, the, the feature is that again, people that, like they have hope for change, and that uh, being in the street, uh, as, I, as, I, as you know, I'm campaigning in India, in, in the one of the districts uh, in Kiev, which is quite spread from downtown. Uh, like uh, in the sector going uh, all over the suburbs, so I have all all kind of sector of voters. So I, I, I can generally say that people are, uh, have still this uh, idea of hope and change. But uh, what is added on top of that is the uh, they kind of became a little bit hesitant and uh, reluctant about the. the the president seem a little bit. Uh, you, you can see it in the numbers uh, yet, because uh, for the moment uh, it's like very fresh uh, uh, results from the presidential election. But you, speaking to the people, you can you can feel that they they, they start to be like uh, asking questions. They they will be successful. What do you think about the president team? If they are doing the right thing or not? So. Uh, is, is a kind of a little bit of uh, uh, people are a little bit alerted about <laughs> what's going on. So uh, 